Hello, I'm Dr. Kathleen Dodaro, and over the last 30 years, I've acquired a significant amount of experience in human resource management, leadership development, and one of the things that I've realized over the last years in my industry experience is that many times people really do not understand the difference between management and leadership. So today I'm here with Brandon, who is a former Front Range Community College student and is now a CU student. And we're going to have a conversation today about management and leadership and the differences between the two. And uh, really looking at what does a good manager do? What are the major things that a good manager must be able to do? So uh, one of my questions that I have is I, I've worked in retail and the terms management and leadership um, are thrown around. They're kind of interchangeable in that environment. Um, but obviously there's a significant difference between leadership and management. Uh, can you elaborate a little? Sure I can. You know, I kind of like to look at it like this, Brandon. Nobody can manage me. Nobody can manage you. We can't manage people. We can manage processes, things, that type of thing we can do. But we cannot manage a person. We lead people. We motivate people. We inspire people. We engage people. There's a big difference. So as a manager, you have to do all of those things. But more than anything else, as a, as a manager, you have to be able to manage those processes. How do we do that? What are the four components of a manager? Leadership and management are interchangeable. You're absolutely right. So we, with a manager, we start out looking at the four basic components of management. And we hope that in some way we still get the leadership piece in there because we want to inspire and engage our workforce. So, uh, Dr. Dendara, why don't we start by identifying um, the four major components of managing. Okay, let's do that. Uh, let's start out with planning. Planning is a way that we look at uh, setting objectives and determining who should accomplish those objectives. So when we do that, we look at hiring the right people. We look at planning the processes that we're going to go through. We look at uh, what happens if something doesn't go right. So we have to have contingency plans. We have to have that in place as well. So planning is the first step, and it's important. Okay, so, so planning is setting the right goals, but you know how can managers ensure that those goals are going to be accomplished? Well, that's done through organizing. When we look at organizing, we allocate the resources and work activities. We organize those things. And we look at um, how much time are we going to need? How much money do we need? Um, what's our budget? Uh, there's a lot of things that we have to organize. And we have to make sure that the resources are there for the people to accomplish the goals and objectives. And that's a, a big part of what a manager does, organizing. Okay. Um, you know, the, uh, it seems like a lot of work. Um, you know, we've not even really covered the, the second two of the four functions. That's true. It is a lot of work. Anybody that thinks that you can go into managing and just work 40 hours a week, you're probably fooling yourself. Most managers work somewhere around 50 or 60 hours a week. And uh, it's become extremely difficult in this global economy with extreme diversification, um, a lot of things that we have to look at as managers that we haven't in the past. So it's very time consuming and very difficult. So those first steps are establishing, pardon me, establishing the correct objectives um, as well as allocating the right resources to the right tasks. But let me ask you, what are the next two steps in effective management? We look at leading. Uh, leading our people. That's where I said, you know, we hope that some of that leadership comes into play because this is where we really start motivating people. How do we motivate them? Uh, it's different for every person. We can't motivate one person the same way we can motivate someone else. We have to look at different generations. We have to look at different motivations to work. Why are people there? What motivates them? It's all about employee engagement. That's one of the things that you'll hear over and over again. So leading is the next one. Okay. 
So let me ask you, uh, we've, we've got one left. What is the last function that any manager needs to know about? It's all about controlling, controlling the workforce. How do we do that? We look at performance evaluations. We look at have we really carried out the goals and objectives that we set out to do? Have my employees done that? How do I go about measuring that? And I think that measurement is a hard thing for people to do. When we look at performance evals, I mean, how many times do you get excited about having a performance eval? Right. None. None. Not very None. often. Right. Because when we look at performance evals, one of the things that we miss is the um, objectivity of it. Sometimes they're very subjective. And it's if the manager likes you or if you're someone's best friend. And what we really need to focus on as a manager to enhance our credibility is quantitative performance evaluations. How do we add the figures and the numbers to it to make sure that our employees have done their job? And I think that covers the four main functions of a manager today. We look at planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.